earth is this? With the passing of time and the erosion that comes with it, islands can form some pretty interesting shapes. You've got a fish in Croatia, you've got a seahorse in Ecuador, you've got a heart in the Maldives, you've even got a smiley face in Malaysia. But have you ever seen an island in the shape of a creepy robot's eye? No? Well now you have and there's no way of unseeing it. Do it sees you. It always sees you. But rest assured, this bizarre island in the Netherlands is not the creation of erosion or natural processes, or aliens, as you might have guessed if you have a brain. This is Ketelmeer, a boundary lake which skirts around the edge of Flevopolder, a monumental man-made island in the middle of the Netherlands. Now I'm not going to go into too much detail about the creation of Flevopolder, as I talked about the region in my previous video. Shameless plug here if you want to learn a bit more how the Dutch did this. But basically this whole area used to be a big salty bay called Zuiderzee until they dammed off the top of it in the 1920s and turned it into a gigantic freshwater lake lake called Iselmere. They then built a massive island in Iselmere called Flevopolder with a little ring of water retained around the outside before damming off parts of that too, creating a series of so-called border lakes, one of which is Ketelmere. And this is just a fragment of the larger Zuiderzee works, a wonderland of artificial islands, lakes and rivers, and one of the seven wonders of the modern world, along with the CN Tower, which shouldn't be in there because it's just a tall building. Fight me in the comments. But one big problem with the creation of the Zuiderzee is that there was now no longer a steady flow of water from the Netherlands' billion trillion rivers into the North Sea, and thus all the fresh water that came through these rivers was just emptied into Ketelmeer and Iselmeer, along with whatever toxic sludge might have been in that water. By far the largest river feeding the lake is the Isel, and yes, before you point it out, I know it's weird as hell that the Isel and Iselmeer have two capital letters at the start of their names. It's because the I sound, formed by I and J in this context in the Dutch language, are considered a single phoneme or sound when placed together, and when written down they are often smushed into one character called a digraph, and either capitalised or uncapitalised together. If you're a linguistics nerd, you might be screaming at your computer, but Gabe, other digraphs aren't capitalised in that fashion. To which I say, you do realise you're talking about the Netherlands, right? The country that has a city whose name begins with an apostrophe, and who has a town called Hungry Wolf. That Netherlands, right? Yeah, okay, I was just checking. But yeah, the Isel is the largest river feeding Iselmere, but before that it has to go through Ketelmere, which is here. And with that, we're back to where we were a few minutes ago. The Isel snakes its way through central Netherlands, starting at the major city Arnhem before passing through the towns of Zutphen, Deventer and Zwolle before emptying into Iselmere. And for more than a century, the Isel was thus the proud recipient of all the toxic sludge containing mercury, cadmium and zinc from factories and smelters in these towns, particularly in the decades following the Second World War. This initially all floated downstream and ended up in Iselmere, until the Flavopolder and all its little border lakes were created in the 1950s and 60s, bottlenecking the flow of all of this toxic sludge into the tiny Ketelmere border lake, creating a layer of sludge about 50 centimetres or one and a half foot deep across the entire lake bed. Whoops. But with the Netherlands being a key member of the European Union, in the 90s, the long arm of Brussels reached over into the Netherlands to wag a finger in the face of the Dutch telling them to clean up the water in Ketelmere and the Isel in order to fall in line with EU environmental regulations and to stop the groundwater from becoming contaminated with toxic sludge. And in typical Dutch fashion, the Rijkswaterstaat, the government body that deals with water management, rolled up its sleeves and went, yes, another chance to massively over-engineer a solution, and got to work. The plan was always to dredge up the toxic silt from the bottom of the lake, but then what? Well, placing it on land was ruled out almost immediately. Not only would that almost certainly be met with massive pushback from the residents of wherever it ended up, but would also present a larger risk of leakage, which could contaminate the ground and cause a major headache further down the line. And as much as they would have loved to fire this waste into the sun, the laws of physics dictated that they had to choose a third option. In the early 90s, it was decided that all of the toxic sludge would effectively just be funneled into a big artificial island that would uh, work as a sort of storage container separating it from the rest of the lake by a series of 10 metre high dikes. By 1996, construction was underway, and by 1999, the project was complete. 
This is Isolol, said Artificial Island in the middle of Ketelmere, which contains its own extremely aesthetically pleasing circular lake in the middle. Isolog technically translates to the Eye of the Isol, which is a cool name already, but it's quite clever because Og is also the old Dutch word for island, so it's also the island of the Isol. Meanwhile, Google completely misses the mark and incorrectly translates it to Ice Cream Eye. So if any Dutch viewers are watching, can you tell me how they've come to that conclusion because I couldn't figure it out. The lake in the middle is not connected to the rest of Ketelmeer. Instead, it's basically a well where all the sludge from Ketelmeer and elsewhere in the Netherlands can be stored, and it's absolutely gigantic. It has a capacity of 23 million cubic meters of waste, has a diameter of a kilometer, and boasts a depth of 50 meters, or 165 feet. To give you a sense of the scale of this project, the surrounding lake has an average depth of just 3 meters, or 10 feet. Along with Dutch dredging firm Boskalis Westminster, the Rijkswaterstaat started dredging up the toxic silt from the lake bed and into the tank at Iseloog in the year 2000. Two thirds of the space is intended for Ketelmeer sludge, with the final third being for sludge elsewhere in the Netherlands. And in 2016, private companies were given permission to apply to deposit their own toxic sludge on the island. Articles from the year 2000 suggest that the process would be completed within about 20 years, but it hasn't quite worked like that. Ketelmeer is now clean which is amazing in its own right, and sludge is still being brought in from other parts of the country. But Iseloog is nowhere near full. A few years back, there were briefly concerns that the island may never be full, as most toxic areas had already been cleared up, and the rate of pollution from Dutch and German factories is so much lower than it used to be. So that's a nice outcome, though it probably annoyed the aqueducts at the Rijkswaterstaat whose calculations had been thwarted, and never underestimate the wrath of a water nerd scorned, because instead of just leaving it as is, they shrank the size of the container so that it would fill up more quickly. For the sake of this video, I actually contacted the Rijkswaterstaat directly, and they told me that they expect Iselolg to be filled in about seven to eight years, and that following the shrinking of the container, there's still about six million cubic meters of space left in there. So it's, yeah, it's gonna be a while. Once Iselolg fills up, then the real fun begins, decantation. The water will be left for a time to let all the gross sediment sink to the bottom, like pulp in an unshaken glass of orange juice. This is helped by the structure's contained sunken nature, protecting it from tides, currents and inclement weather. Once that's done, the quote unquote clean water at the top will be siphoned off and sanitized using a filtration process before being sent back into Ketelmeer. The contaminated sludge will then be treated by facilities on the island which will separate the pollutants from the silt. The contaminants will be shoved back in the well and permanently sealed with layers of clay and sand, forever consigning them to the Iseloog. But get this, the separated and now clean silt will be used to create more artificial marshland covered islands nearby as a bird habitat. To see a snapshot of what this might look like, just take a closer look at Iseloog. This little island off its southeastern coast is called Hanseplat and was created from the silt that was excavated from the initial creation of Iseloog, and it's currently a thriving bird sanctuary. Furthermore, the middle of the eye will then be covered over in silt, and Iseloog will be turned into a little island that might be used for recreation or power generation or other fun stuff the government hasn't said yet. It's all very cool and very Dutch and we're all very jealous of their big brains. The design of this thing means that leaks and flooding are not a concern. The bottom of the tank is lined with piles of extremely thick, impenetrable clay, while the walls are lined with foil, I assume not kitchen foil, but something a bit more industrial grade. Furthermore, to avoid flooding, the water is kept four meters below the level of the surrounding lake, which is lower than the actual lake bed, and the circular dike that forms the perimeter of the eye is 10 meters tall, despite not looking like that at all. So whatever goes into the isolog doesn't come out unless we want it to. Isolog is an example of a municipal cleanup project done right. Polluted silt is a widespread issue across the globe, but the Dutch being the Dutch, they did the prerequisite maths and took a punt on what seemed a pretty weird idea, and then the world watched as they once again conquered a common problem with a highly uncommon solution. The Isolog is a genuinely masterful piece of engineering, and is a perfect demonstration of the Dutch modus operandi of engineering their way out of a corner. From the beachgoers in Kettlemere who are looking to avoid wading through toxic sludge on their day out, to birds looking for a nice habitat, to the government who might have ended up with a pretty hefty engineering bill had they tackled this problem incorrectly. Uh, Isolog is just a win-win for everyone. Except for me because I'm so cold, oh my God. My hands are gonna fall off. <laughs>